Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays and this is a rather special episode of um, Factorio Industrial Revolution because after about eight months of playing we've finally finished we've achieved our objective which was to run through the game and to do um, all of the basic normal researches so anything that requires just normal colored uh, research packs and then to do at least one of all of the infinite researches and I believe we have now done that Although, this sort of makes it look like maybe we haven't. I'll have to have a look, look through this and just make absolutely sure. But we've got the infrastructure in there anyway. So, like every game of Factorio, we started off with a, what I'm going to call a main bus, despite this being a sort of a bit of a weird tangle. But we had the, the standard starting point of a load of a load of mines and then smelting and so on, and then passing the stuff along here, down this this bit, this this along. This long here that eventually became our, our our fledgling main bus and then of course had to turn because we found there was water and cliffs and things but we were trying we were trying trying quite hard and so this is industrial revolution and that means there are various different levels of technology so you start off with everything being um, powered by steam so we had this array of steam uh, of uh, copper boilers along here that took in water from a from a pump somewhere down or down 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 wherever wherever water comes from here we go from here and then start and then we're boiling that into steam by feeding it with um, with coal so you start off with uh, one or two of these and you and you can put the and you can just sort of directly insert the coal into them with a short belt but uh, sh uh, short inserter sorry but then we we came up with this cunning system here um, for loading the loading the coal in once the um, what, what once we wanted to have a large number of them in a fairly small space and what's happening here is we've got the um, obviously the water's being turned into steam through the boilers because that's what boilers do but then here, these are all actually steam-powered inserters. So instead of the, instead of being powered by electricity, we have to you have to plumb steam through the through these um, steam pipes for absolutely everything, because at this stage of the game there is no electricity to use. So you've got steam-powered inserters. Then that feeds along here. We had steam-powered assembly machines and um, lots of steam-powered assembly machines. And up up here we probably had a load of steam-powered mining drills as well. So everything. I think there was a brief burner stage, so some of the mining drills would take um, would take coal. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, so you've got burner mining drills, and then you've got steam-powered mining drills. So you f first you need to feed coal in, then you need to feed steam in. Then you can get onto the electric ones, and eventually the advanced ones. Um, but and then that's the same across other things. You've got furnaces, you've got uh, steam-powered crushers, and then followed by electrical crushers, steam-powered mixers, and electrical mixers, and advanced mixers, and and so on. So all of these things have different different tiers that you can you can work your way up through. Even the even the laboratories for science, you start off with a steam-powered one. And so we had all these steam pipes going along here, giving us a, um, a power supply along the bus that was was literally fed with fed with steam and steam is another fluid so you have to worry a little bit about how the how the steam was flowing although to be honest we didn't have too many problems with that as long as we had enough input we tended to be okay with the output so you can see as it comes along here we've got various these various steam machines and sometimes we have areas where here we've upgraded all of these these ones that were making the red science we've upgraded them to the electric assemblers but that was later on we came back and sort of swapped all the parts around in order to get that extra bit of throughput because these machines are a bit slower they used to craft at 0.5 these craft at one so these are twice as fast it's a quick and easy way to get a bit of an update an, an upgrade without needing any extra space but we've still kept some of the steam powered inserters in here because presumably basically just due to laziness during the upgrade and that carries on along the bus we've got and then things it's the same and then as you as we get further down you get more and more of the electrical machines and then i think around here somewhere no a little bit further around here we probably moved over to electrical in on its in, in entirety and we stopped using steam power completely but as is always the way with factorio we never bothered to upgrade any of the older stuff as long as it was working well enough because well why would you it was good it was good enough that was all we needed so the, we did discover though that there's, as as you, again as usual in Factorio, we got to a point where there wasn't anything like enough stuff going down the bus to keep everything ticking over. So we started to move off onto the normal villaging system, but not until the bus had got ludicrously wide down here. And it was a it was a difficult decision to decide what sort of things we should be transporting on the bus. I mean, the obvious one is yes, you definitely want to be transporting the, um, the the metal ingots around. But then, do you transport each for each metal? Do you then transport the cogs and the rods around? I and mean, here we've got um, this is copper, and I think this is probably tin. So we've got tin cogs, tin rods, copper, all of that. We've got bronze down here. We've got that might be that's probably tin, copper, 
bronze, steels, irons, very all kinds of things. There's lots and lots of different things on on here, and they all and you want and you need different things for different different jobs as well. So you can't just shove, you can't do what you do in normal Factorio and just shove plates onto the bus for everything. Because for example, when you want to make rivets, they require rods, and rods require ingots. So or solder requires ingots. So there's always there's always the decisions of which one you, which one you're going to have in any individual place and so you end up having to ship in all kinds of different things so we thought well let's let's abandon that idea i mean we the bus was enormous by the time we abandoned it but we thought let's move over to the base, to a sort of a village system so that's where you um transport everything around by train and that tends to be how factorio goes in in vanilla factorio I'll, I'll build up to the point where it starts to get a bit silly and then i'll start to move over to having smelting on a um, on a train train based system so down here for example we've got <clears throat> i think this is tin yes this looks like tin to me so we're bringing in um we've got a tin mine somewhere else in the in the factory it's bringing in the tin or shipping it into all of these machines here. so the next thing I'm going to mention is you've got all the different different ways of dealing with the metals. The first most basic one is you take in the ore, you put it into the smelters, and you get the ingots out on the other side. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Let's just check that to make sure I'm, I'm right. So tin ore, for example, you take in the tin ore and you turn it into you, and you cook it into ingots. Simple, and that's a one to one ratio. So that's, that's it, it's okay. I mean that, that's how you get started. You need to get started somehow, and it's easy. But then you realise that if you crush it first with these machines, you can then crush it into one to two crushed tin ore. So you're gaining 50% over there, and then with the crushed tin ore can then be smelted down into into tin ingots. So that gets you an extra 50% just by doing this extra step of crushing it and then feeding that straight up into the into the smelting machines. But then beyond that, there's another option with the tin ore. You can Ah, uh, here we go, yes. You can um, wash it in, in water, and then you get one to two pure tin mineral out. So you, again, you're adding another 50% onto there, because that's that's one and a half. On average, that's one and a half each time. And you're also getting out a bit of lead mineral. So we're doing that down here, <clears throat> almost. Not quite, but I'll, I'll get back to that in a moment. So you, we're washing it, and that's producing here, you can see we've got the washed tin ore, and the, uh, sorry, the pure tin min mineral, that's the blue stuff, and the pure lead mineral is the white stuff. And then you split that off up here, and you send the, uh, the the lead mineral to the to these machines to be smelted into lead ingots that go off to wherever. And then the tin goes into these machines here. We turn it into tin ingots, and you feed it into another station. And that's how the village system works. You you bring in bring in a, a raw ingredient or raw ingredients by train. Then you do all the processing that they require, and you ship them back out again by train. Now most villages tend to be manufacturing villages, um, but I'll get back to that again in, in a moment. So the next thing you can do with the, uh, the your tin ore, washed your tin ore, your crushed tin ore, is you can wash it in sulfuric acid instead, and that's what we're doing down here, and that produces a very small amount of tin, but it produces significantly more of the lead, so the secondary metal. So in this mod pack. Each of the metal ores, and there's what we've got. We've got um, gold here. We've got tin. We've got iron. We've got copper. And then as well, you've got things like coal and uranium and stone as well. But they're slightly different. But each of the each of the main ones, the gold, the tin, the ore, and the, the the iron and the copper, they can all they can all be then washed in in either in water or in acid to produce a secondary one. So as is, as I was saying, in the case of tin, it's lead. Um, you can also get chromium and tellurium from gold and some chromium i think is the other one so there are uh, there are four extra metals you can make with these sort of processes and a lot of the time you can just set up there are lots of different ways you can set this up what we've done here is a sort of a fairly simple method where we we're doing the, the advanced processing over here so we'll always have loads and loads of lead coming out here as long as we use a, at least a little bit of tin up and then we're prioritizing the lead that's produced from here with these splitters to make sure that gets used up by these smelting machines before we use up the crushed lead from over here because as I said that boosts the efficiency a little bit but also it makes sure that we're using that up in plenty of time to use up all of the all of the lead that there will always be a plentiful supply of lead now this is a great theory however we ran into some problems up here and this is one of the biggest bugbears in sort of the the end game point of the 
well, of the game, is that we were um, was was trying to balance the gold and the tellurium production. So again, we've got the same sort of basic idea over here. We've got a train that brings in gold gold ore. It's being crushed, then it's being washed, and this has a weird mixture of um, acid and water washing going on in it. So it's, it's a bit of a mess. But then that's trying to produce enough gold and enough tellurium to keep both these stations happy. And as you can see, the gold has backed up completely. And the tellurium is, well, it's, it's a bit short. It's 47,000, actually, so there's quite a lot of it. But I've sort of gone in and botched this a little bit by putting in these um, incinerators. Which, I don't know, I mean, it, it works. It's just burning up and wasting some of the gold. And it feels very wasteful and a bit of a shame. If we'd been carrying on a bit longer, I think the correct way to do this would have been to have a second gold handling facility. So you, they, you then have two completely separate ones that don't share any inputs or outputs. And so a train would come in with gold. One of them would do the water washing and the other would do the acid washing. And you then have the priorities set on the output stations so that the one that is being produced as the side product in that station is, is has a higher is, is taken at a higher priority so for the gold the one that's producing mostly gold you have a high priority on the tellurium station so the tellurium will always get taken away and you do the opposite on the um on the on the one that's producing mostly tellurium but we never really got round to that partly because we were a very short of space for a lot of the time and partly because we just couldn't be bothered and we were so close to the end we just sort of botched things a little bit to try and make it work so um, yes, there are lots and lots of different ways to make to make the metals in this, and and the later ones are, as I say, they're more efficient. They use less ore for the amount of um, output they produce, so they are very worth using. And a 50% jump for each level is a big jump, so that's very worthwhile. One of the things that makes this mod pack complicated and 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 uh, and challenging. And the reason that this bus is so long without actually producing that many different things is because a lot of things have incredibly long production chains. So if we take a look down down here, for example, this area from about here to about here is producing red computers. That's all. That's all, and, and red circuits actually, to be fair. But that's all, which are a part of red computers. But that's all it's doing. So we've got machines at the end here that are taking in, where they're making gold foil and gold gold cables and we're making we've got another, more, another row here that are making these red circuit boards and then we're making um transistors for them we're making what's this oh silicon wafers for the transistors and so and and then and, and then the, the silicon for that and, and and so on and so on and so on so there's many 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 stages and even simple mechanical things there's often an, a large number of stages to run through Yes, here, for example, we've got, ignoring the mess of the station for stuff coming in here, we've got a huge area here that's producing, that we, where we've got, I think the, I think this is chrome steel coming in. It's being made into chrome steel plates, and into chrome steel rods, and into chrome steel gears, um, which are then required over here in order to make electric motors along with lube, and also wire, and so... So, that, so to, to make these electric motors requires lube, which is, has its own own challenges. But we also need to make these gears, which are made out of plates, which are made out of ingots. These wires that are made out of ingots. Rods, which are made out of ingots. Plates, which are made out of ingots. And so on. So we bring in ingots, and then they get split off into lots of different directions. But you can't make rods from plates, and you can't make gears directly from ingots. So there's always that sort of... There's always quite a lot of steps in order to get something in. And that was what was quite challenging, especially very early on, as we were sort of learning the system. And that's why we've ended up with facilities like this one that's just making loads of plates, and this one that's making lots and lots of cogs, and then just putting them onto the bus and hoping that we'll just let them flow down and and uh, take them where we need them. And that just means you're, that, and that is why the bus was getting quite as wide as it was. And then you do all of that with the copper and the tin and suddenly you find something that requires bronze ingots or bronze gears as well. So you then have another set of them here. And then you have rivets which are required as well. So you get the these reinforced plates which require rivets that which so the reinforced plates require plates which are made from ingots and rivets which are made from rods which are made from ingots. So as you can see we're feeding in the ingots and then making everything from that. But it just means you've got so many machines for each of those things. Down here, I've got a green. This this entire thing here is a green circuits factory. Now, okay, there's two copies of it, but it's still, it's making. Um, oh, and com green computers as well. So we're making, we're making again plates and rods to make uh, rivets to make frames, um, and we're, then we're making copper cable to make uh, triax. No, not triax. Um, vacuum tubes, and we're making copper foil to make to make circuit boards to make 
um, and then we're making solder and, and, and all of that is going in to make these green circuits and then that is going into the computer into up here to make computers so there's just, just so many and such a tangle of, um, of different different recipes required to go through and, and make each thing and to be honest I see that as both a sort of a, a plus and a minus it does add in some complexity and some sort of and a bit of a challenge going through and making those chains of ingredients but after you've done it a few times it starts to get a little bit old it gets a little bit samey when you're, you're you're running through the same processes over and over again so i see what what they're going for with this and it is quite a nice way of adding a bit of extra complexity and challenge to the game but i think it might have gone a little bit too far <laughs> And that has meant, as always, of course, you end up with the sort of the trying to squeeze in afterthought. So we've got a train that comes in here to pick up useful things for um, going off and doing um, file stuff. So that's the fully automated rail layer that just makes putting down railways a lot easier. But we've got a tangle of tangle of things in here that's just trying to make all of the all of the bits and pieces that are needed to make all of the railway infrastructure. One of the things I also found and has been kept getting pointed out, particularly by Mike, was a lot of the time when I was going out and building up my villages, you'd end up with, I'm trying to find a particularly good or particularly bad example, depending on which way around you look at it. But you'd often find that you build up a massive, what would, a village that would take up a huge amount of space, but then you'd step back and look at it and you'd find that most of it was stations and it was just a little bit of work, work being done on top. This, this is a good example. So here we've got plastic and glass and um, petroleum coke and sulfuric acid being dropped off and low density structures and plastic glass being picked up. Um, and then we've just got these few re few rows of assembly machines. And when we first did build this, I didn't have these top two sections on either. It was just these, these rows here. And it just felt like you've built up this whole area of stations to do this little area of, of assembly. And it it feels like you're just wasting a lot of space. Here we've got the same sort of thing with blue belts. We've got um, one, two, three, four, four drop-off stations. There was going to be a pickup station that I ended up not using. And then just this tiny little area doing the actual assembly of the belts. Now, that's not to say it was always like that. There were some areas where you ended up with much, much bigger areas, particularly the smelting areas. And down here we've got red circuits, and that's taking up quite a lot of space. Admittedly, it's, it's been built down here, it's been built in a slightly less compact way, and then I feel like something's been crammed in at the top here because we were running out of space. Um, but sometimes, or down here, we've got a few, we've got, what have we got being brought in? We've got iron being brought in and chromium, and then we've got stainless steel, carbon steel, and... Uh, being brought out, oh, and carbon being brought out, and charcoal being brought in. So we've got a relatively small area of stations and a big area of machines above it. So it's not always the case that it was like that, but we often, you're often not quite sure what the best sort of ratios of things to bring stuff in in is. That's some good English there. And over here we did the same sort of thing with it. So, so eventually we built, went off. We built up all of the. Um, all of the villages to make all of the sciences. So down here we've got these. These ones are making the um, the red red science, I think. Nope, that's something else. <laughs> making green science here. Oh, and red and red science. Yes, yeah, so we're making red and green science here in more or less the same place. They're being taken away from the same station. We've got yellow science up here somewhere, and all the other ones are sort of just generally scattered around the base, being made wherever required. And that means the LTN system can then grab the grab them all. Bring them in down here, and they can all be unloaded into the science machine, into, into the science area down here, and passed through the labs, and all of the science can be done. So that that worked. After a lot of work, that was pretty functional and, and was and was running well. Early on in the game, we discovered, or rel no, actually for most of the game, we discovered that we were getting through enormous amounts of electricity, and we hadn't got to nuclear yet. So we'd end up with these sort of massive areas of. Um, of power stations. So here we've got a station which is bringing, where we're bringing in charcoal and possibly normal coal. It's all being dumped onto these belts. We're feeding it through into into ranks and ranks and ranks of boilers. And the problem with this, the problem with this, is it creates an enormous quantity of pollution. As you can see, we've got lots and lots of red all over the base, and that was leading to lots and lots of biter attacks. Now, most of the time it was okay because we did we had developed some some fairly good defences by this time. So we had flame turrets, we had a com combination of shotgun and machine gun turrets, and they have various different strengths. The machine gun turrets have a much greater range, as you can just about see on this terrain. The shotgun turrets have a shorter range, 
but they do, but they they have a bit a certain amount of spray, so they, so they can get quite a lot of biters when they're coming in in clumps, and they do quite a lot of damage as well comparatively. And we work through various different tiers of ammunition as well. So you've got um, you can start off with the iron magazines for the uh, for the machine gun turrets and and your own machine guns, and you move on to carbon steel, which is significantly better. Does Two more, but well, does about six more damage. Then you move on to stainless, which does an extra three, an extra um, eight damage or so, and then on to the uh, depleted uranium, which does enormous quantities of damage, just like in uh, just like in vanilla. We went through copper, bronze, iron, and carbon steel for the shotgun cartridges, but we kept the shotgun uh, turrets in because they are very absolutely devastating against a big supply, a big run of biters coming in, even when you've got the uh, depleted uranium ammunition available, which we do somewhere. It just hasn't made its way all all the way up here, so there. Yes, yeah, there's a little bit down here in the green. So we worked up those. Uh, we did have one biter, major biter incursion during the run, and that was down here on this sort of slightly awkward diagonal wall. And it's been rebuilt since then, uh, a little better. So I think let's go back and have a uh, have a have a look at the uh, the biter incursion we got and uh, sort of see how that went down. The thing, and I I was pretty much right. The one thing that I missed was one of the machines. Um, Ooh, that's not good. It's all right, I'm there. here. Uh, do you need a handout? Did you take the artillery train down? Yeah, you've gone down there with the artillery, artillery, and it's been overstressing the defences. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <That'll be all laughs> right. Oh, also, you're blowing all of the uh, walls and turrets up yourself with your rockets. That's smart. Well, I am doing that by accident. <laughs> Maybe yeah, you're doing boss. more damage than the fighters are. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not sure it is. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not all right. It is better. I've sent the artillery it's, train away because it was, was just making say, things send worse. the artillery train away. <laughs> I'm going to come down and give you a hand off. Hooray! <laughs> so, um, yeah, things don't seem to be going very well down there. <laughs> it's fine. Is it? Is it fine? Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, it's can't shoot through walls. Are you? What? No. Oh. Oh my god, there's a lot of biters still coming. I'm yeah. a little bit surprised about the number yeah. of um <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised about the number of them were, were uh out. Oh but a train is turned out that... that's good. Like why is my oh, I'm gonna... Ow! <laughs> Why is friendly I... fire on? <laughs> why are you to... shooting me? <laughs> I am so <someone's> afraid <laughs> at least the train's running away. This... Now there is a biter coming out of the base towards the fight. What's going so... on down there? <laughs> We never have friendly fire on. Oh, this is not good. Uh, the the um, number of things destroyed counter has just passed 300, and it forgets yep. about things quite quickly. Yep. So, um, yeah. We have any personal flamethrower? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought I put the train down there, and I put it on the track that I stepped on. Given that friendly fire is a thing, do you think that we're going <laughs> to start issuing people with personal flamethrowers? We have to, because it's the only thing that will damage those f***ing baddies. There is. I can't um, even get my corpse. I'm, right, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to sneak through them to get to my corpse. If they come down, if they come down this way, there we go. I've got a wall of turrets that'll help. I if think you can help a bit. Right, yeah, you tank. You tank oh, around here. Oh, where did I die? Forgot yep. about that. Where's my other dead? Lawrence, oh, stand still. There. No the path. What? Um. There you go, you guys have uranium ammo now. Thank you. Oh, I already had. Thank you. Okay, I... Now you have more, then. <laughs> yes, I, I picked up basically the chest full. No, come back! Oh, f*** me. I keep forgetting to tell to... the train to stay the hell put. I like the way the bots are on the way over. It's like, it's fine, we got this! Mm. You're right, that, that um, green ammo is amazing. Oh, don't stand in the good. goo! I think we might have won. Green's coming through. Careful, there's other lines. Uh, uh, guys, biter, 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 biter. Oh god, what's he doing there? <laughs> Why? Well, eating <laughs> stuff, Lawrence. Eating stuff. Okay. With his big, big, bitey teeth. Why is the power you up there? Why's the, you why why is the radar? Uh, oh. It's probably because it ate stuff with its big, bitey teeth. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But in order to try and prevent attacks like that, we ended up building up enormous quantities of these arboretums and growing up 
grow and growing trees and this this had two two functions really one was that it produced enormous amounts of wood which we needed for partly for fuel because we're turning it into charcoal and partly for a lot of the recipes around this place that need fuel that need that need wood as one of the ingredients particularly the the rubber wood although these are these are growing normal wood but they also suck up the pollution around them when the trees are growing as well so they're quite good for pulling some of that um pollution back out of the air and reducing the biter attacks but as you can see here we've got some quite large areas of tree growing being done over here and this is a thing that's repeated all over the base often we had a tactic of running them running uh, these arboretums up next to the walls and the so this will hopefully catch a lot of the pollution that's being generated and as you can see there's a bit a bit less of it over here than there is on the other side so they are catching and blocking some of the pollution there's another one down here in the middle that's sucking up some of it from here and trying to and, and another one here? Yes. Try and stop it drifting out down into this danger area where all these biters were attacking. So yeah, they were, there were some mitigation strategies we could use. Another one was to put in these these um, air purification towers. And they do a similar sort of thing. You feed them charcoal and they will scrub pollutants out of the air. And again, you get the sort of the... And that's probably why that no pollution has managed to sneak past this wall here because as it, as it sort of it comes along and it goes in over the wall and then it gets sucked up by the purification towers and dealt with so that again has helped reduce the number of attacks we've been having on the on the um, on, on the base and we've needed that because at various times throughout the game we've we've really struggled with, with the biters i don't know whether they're harder in this game or whether it's just that we've been building out so big and so heavily and so pollutanty that we've just had a lot of attacks but we found that the biters have been a major challenge and also because progression through the uh, through science is a bit slower because everything's harder we've also found it harder to get onto the later weapons like the the uh, the nukes and the artillery and so on and we have we have got artillery by the end of the game yes but it was harder to get there. It was harder to, to find that. And so in mid-game, we were really struggling to, to expand out and uh, and, re and claim territory. It would, I think this, yeah, it was it was this area over here. We expanded from about, we had a wall going across about here. And then we expanded up to get basically up to, up to here. And I think that took us about a month to do, which was crazy. So we had so two or three people, but maybe sometimes even all four of us, fighting against the biters, just trying to push them back and getting and, and, and all getting horribly killed and if we look in here at the number of um, deaths we've had uh, let's look over all time uh, what is it what, what's what's it called what's the play oh here we go we've had a character we've had 231 deaths throughout the game from um, uh, from, from, tr from fighting against the biters and notably we've had 19 um, 19 kills of players as well now we think this might be mostly trains but it's also possible it's been Mike testing the artillery on other players it's it, it could it could go either way <laughs> but we did eventually get onto nuclear power so i mean it was a it was a big job but eventually we managed to get nuclear power up and running and we've also got some quite la quite large amounts of solar going on as well so these are all clean power generation methods and that has helped a lot with the amount of um, pollution we're producing there was also another thing that gave us some issues with the um with the biters at one point was there was one update where the walls became flammable. So when your flame turrets fired at the biters, they would also set fire to the walls, they'd destroy the walls, and then the biters could get in. And even if the biters didn't get in, it then gave the bots enormous amounts of work to do to go out and repair or replace the walls, and that just made it... That that made it rather tricky, shall we say. So I'm glad that there was then another update after that that, uh, that fixed that problem. <laughs> So yes, after a long time, as I say, about eight months of play, we finally managed to build up the uh, the rocket launch system here. And as you can see, the, the fuel is the rocket fuel is trickling in. We've got all the other bits and pieces that go into a rocket. This one is now about half finished, so we just need to leave that running. And eventually, we'll have have another rocket launch, and then we'll send, then we'll get some a bit more uh, white science. So we did make it. We did. We made it. Yes. And as I say, we our goal was to do all of the uh, the non-infinite sciences and one e and one of the first each first part of each um, each infinite science. And so yes, I've we've 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 had a, we've had a lot of fun with this. There's been um, a little bit of sort of bickering going on because of course of, of course there is. And we, but it's all all been in good fun. I mean the. There are different different people have different naming schemes for stations. So we start off with the little things like over here. 
This one is called named after what the area does, followed by what it's waiting for. So this is a bro this area makes bronze, fine, but we've got bronze needs requiring tin, bronze requiring copper, and then bronze bronze pickup. Whereas when I name stations, I do it the other way around. I'll call it petroleum drop for four rockets or petroleum coke for rocket. Um, and now I, th I think everyone has their own reasons for why they do it. I'm personally I do it this way around because then when you're searching for a station in the list to send a train there. Um, you can say, I want the train to go to, I want, I, I want to pick up some, or I want to get rid of some gold. So I'll scroll down to where it says gold. And then we say, oh, this is all the gold smeltery stuff. None of this will do. Ah, here we go. This is a gold one for blue circuits. And then you get, and then you get people who are being a bit silly. And I have to admit some of that was me, but then we have ones down here where it says a station for dropping off the iron, which is going to, going to be made into basic computers. <laughs> so I think this, these ones were actually were me. And then um, I think Al has a habit of naming stations after um, song related puns as well. So I can't see I can't see any of his examples at the moment. But um, there were definitely some Duran Duran puns in there and goodness knows what else. So it's sort of the entertainment and challenge of, of playing with other uh, other real people. This was another thing that people kept doing early on as well. So this station here, they've used the icons. <laughs> And okay, this one's not too bad. Wood for charcoal, I, I can deal with that. But there are some where, um, like this one here. I mean, I, 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 half the time I can't tell. That, I, I believe that one's tin, but it could be iron. It could be almost anything. So some of the icons are a little bit tricky to tell apart. But you know, that's the um, the entertainment value of playing with um, play, playing with your friends. Some of whom like to like to troll a little bit. <laughs> like. We had some, someone kept running around putting these on the, on the map whenever I was uh, streaming, and um, I, I'm, I'm sure he, he, he meant I'm sure he meant well. <laughs> um, what else did I was going to say? Oh yeah, so but my thoughts on the mod pack in general. Well, it was I reckon it, it was it was difficult. I think if I'd been if I'd been playing on my own, I would really have struggled with a lot of the combat because. Um, I felt like we were getting to the point where the biters were just better than we were, so the only better than our weapons were. So if you wanted to have a decent chance of clearing them out, you almost needed to have two players: one to run in and get their attention and kite them, and then the other one to go in and do some damage. Um, now, it's possible that if I'd been playing on my own, I would have expanded more slowly, and therefore there wouldn't have been as much pollution. Um, as it was, we had um, one player who was who spent a lot of the time, especially in the early early stages of the game, just constantly building out um, smelting facilities, and they and they produce a lot of pollution. Um, like this this one here, for example, producing iron. Yes, it's, it's, it's doing really really well. Um, it's great great design produces produces iron at a really good rate, but because it's huge, it produces massive quantities of pollution. And if I'd been playing on my own, perhaps I'd have built a bit smaller, so that wouldn't have been an issue. It's hard to say. The graphics are very nice in it. There's a clear, I can tell that a lot of work has gone into them. So we've got these um, tier. These are the tier th three, tier two, tier three smelters, um, and they look they look good. They, they fit they, they fit the general aesthetic, the steampunk aesthetic of the of the whole of the whole game. Um, they're different from the from the stock graphics. It keeps keeps things interesting. Over here we've got um, washing plants. So we've got yeah again new graphics, nice animations on it. It it, it looks good. Um, and all the different levels are distinct as well. So over here, you can you can easily tell the um, the steam-powered ones because they're all made from copper and bronze, and then you get the electrical ones which are made from iron or steel. So they're a nice, nice obviously different colours. <clears throat> um, and then eventually we got onto laser-based um, assembly machines. Here we go. Eventually you get onto laser assemblers. That's that's these ones. They they, they again they don't look at quite. There isn't quite the same level of um, difference between them. They are they look the same as the normal electric assemblers. But slightly more lasery. They've got a they've got a different different cog on the front, and they've got and, the, and they've got sort of instead of having hang on is that instead of having these sort of choppy choppy things going in going into them, they're, they're using lasers, so they, they glow quite nicely. So they again they look a bit different, and it makes it makes it means you can tell these things apart. I think oh they've got a yellow top, whereas these have a have a grey top, and again so you, you can you can to some extent you can you can see the difference in that in those. And as I say, there are lots and lots of different machines in the in the uh, in the mod pack, and and um, the the drills look different. Again, you've got the different tiers of drills, and it all it all works quite well together. It's got it's got a good unified aesthetic. So yeah, I'm I'm generally very impressed with the graphics in it. One thing I'm slightly less impressed with is the um is the way it makes it difficult and complicated. I mentioned earlier the sort of the really long chains of of um, things you need to make in order to produce. Whatever whatever end product it is, so you, you take in the the um, 
the ingots and you make the plates you make the plates to make the cogs and taking the ingots to make the rods to make the rivets and so on and i felt that was it got a little bit repetitive so i was wasn't quite as fond of that i feel like space exploration for example has done a better job of keeping all of the different things you do more different so you you have a bit more variety in the playthrough and you don't feel like you're just doing the same sort of thing over and over again in a, in a slightly different area with slightly different materials so it's yeah i'd say it, it's not bad it, it's probably it's probably slightly more probably on about on par with angel bobs i think for the sort of the 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 doing the same thing again but with a different metal sort of sort of feel um one of the other things i did find was that the there are the various different tiers as i've mentioned you start off you start off with the, the burner tier then you move on to steam then you move on to electric then you move on to advanced or laser or, or whatever whatever it's called we didn't use very much of the advanced stuff so the laser assemblers we did we used a few of those because there were a few recipes where they were required but we didn't really go in and replace we didn't start to start to go okay now i'm going to start building everything with laser assemblers so because even though they yes they run twice as fast they are quite difficult to make because they required the lasers which required um gems which were fairly expensive to get hold of so we didn't use an enormous number of those we didn't ever use the ingot foundries or the sorry the foundries either um and these are supposed to be a way to make um plates or ingots plates or f gears directly from i forget exactly what but it's, it cuts out some of the steps of the process and i think it um allows you to make them it doesn't make them any more efficiently but it does produce a byproduct that's faintly that's vaguely useful so there are there are a number of things in here that we never really used um perhaps because we didn't we didn't really go full end game on it we got to the point of doing the um the first infinite research and the right that'll do rather than carrying on to try and go for a mega base but i think at this point we we're all ready to move on to do something to do something else so it's uh yeah, we, d we didn't feel the need to use some of the more late game stuff. And again, with the repair packs, you can make repair packs out of copper, bronze, iron, carbon steel, or stainless steel, and they get better and better. They, I think they repair, yes, they repair slightly faster, and they repair and they can do more repairing. But we got as far as iron, and then we went, well, that seems to be good enough. We'll just use those. So there are a few things that were unused. I did like the battery system. So in your um, in in your inventory in your armor, you've got as normal. You can put you can put in the various exoskeletons and and robot ports and things to use that will use power. But to power them, instead of you can you can at least earlier on in the game when you don't have access to better things, you can put in this battery discharge equipment, and that allows you to put in batteries that will then be di gradually discharged over time in order to power your armor and when they get, when they're empty they get dumped dropped off into your inventory and you can and you then have to recharge them and what we've done of course is we've told the bots to take away any flat batteries and bring me charged batteries so over here we have a system that takes in bat takes where the duff bat the flat batteries are brought in they're charged up by these machines and then they're taken away again out to the players who need them which works brilliantly um but it's 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 another little logistics thing to think about, and I quite like that. I think it was that was a that was a nice 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 way of uh, powering the armor before you get on before you get the uh, the real full size RTG um, systems. Another thing we built, and this is this isn't so much a, um, a an industrial revolution thing, it's just something I've never done before, was an entirely bot based um, central mall area. So around here we've got. For example, we're here. We're making locomotives, and this this chest is requesting all of the things that you need to make locomotives. So iron gears, iron beams, engines, green computers, and whatever else. And then somewhere nearby, well, we're bringing in all of the raw ingredients, including circuits and computers, but and, and, and ingots. And then here we're making the iron cogs. So that's bringing in the iron ingots that it, sorry the iron plates that needs to make the cogs and somewhere else in here there'll be a machine that's making the iron plates from the iron ingots so the whole the whole system is completely self-contained and completely bot run and it, we just bring in the raw ingredients and then everything is available in the chests now the flashing lights you can see are the ones that haven't actually caught up yet um, ignore the ones over on the side here those are spare machines at the moment so th those those lights don't count but all the ones in the middle here are ones that just haven't caught up despite the fact this has been running for a, quite a long time now so 
I think if we if we cared about this system a bit more, if we've been using it for a bit longer, we'd be going in and looking at which ones of these haven't caught up yet, finding out why, and putting in a bit more supply of all of those things. A few more, because there's no reason why you can't have two or three or four machines making some of the more commonly used things. Like down here, we've got uh, cables and uh, whatever those are um, being made twice. It's probably being made somewhere else up in here as well. But this system was... I don't know, it was interesting. I've, it replaces the entire main bus, essentially. And so you can see how much more compact it is. It's just, the, just this little area up here instead of all of this and everything hanging off it. That said, it doesn't have, it doesn't have anything like the same throughput. But, at this, at the, but once you're just using it to make the machines for expansion, you don't need that same level of, um, of throughput, especially as we're making the belts elsewhere. We're making blue belts, red belts here. We're making blue belts up here. We're making all of the inserters on a on, on a village down here. So again, you don't need you don't need a massive quantity of of those sort of basic things being made here. This is just making things like um, let's look for some end, end products in here. There's there's an ore washing plant, I think. Or, or is that an ore washing plant? One's a mixer, one's an ore washing plant. Or locomotives, or pump, offshore pumps. All these things can be made rel in relatively small quantities in this little area here. Um, because you're never going to want more than about 20 of them at a time, probably. And So this, this has worked quite nicely. Um, would I do it again? I'm not sure. Because I quite like the sort of the basic factorio feel of having long belts with all of the things being made off them. Um, bots don't feel quite as factorio-y to me, so I just yeah, I, I tend to not really do this sort of thing. But it was interesting to try it once. So, yes, that has been Industrial Revolution. As I say, it has taken us about eight months to get to this point. That's, that's streaming for sort of three or four hours a week, so it's not, we've not been playing constantly, but we have been playing steadily. Um, and we've got to have a look 124 hours in that time so it's been it's been quite a big mod pack and it's been it's been been good it's been good fun we've in, we've enjoyed playing it certainly it's also quite interesting to note how different people tended to fall into different um into different roles tristan was very much in charge of the train systems i tended to do a lot of the building of the villages and making making the uh, and, and setting up the the systems to produce the science packs or the whatever we needed like this one mike did a lot of the the mining and the the ore processing facilities and al did a lot of defense and, and um and building up these uh, these outpost stations that bring in out bring in about a bajillion different bits and pieces and then uh, and then keep in order to keep the uh, the walls built up and protected and and just working so yeah, it's been nice to it's been nice to have a sort of the 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 the, the, um, the divide in the effort in that, and to have people to talk to while we're playing as well, of course. <laughs> and so I think that's about all I have for you for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I, I as I say, I, I do recommend this pack. I think it, it's been good. It's been good fun. We've enjoyed playing it. It's not my top Factorio mod. But it is definitely up there with, with it, it is one of the good ones. So if you if you've played space exploration and want to do something else, then I think this is a good one to do next. So now we're going to be thinking about what to stream next. We're we're planning to pl do a um, a Minecraft run next, but we're we're going to add in a load of um, mods to Minecraft in order to make it a bit more factorio like. So it's not just going to be going out and building houses and castles and things. We're going to have um, industry and assembly lines and that sort of thing and I feel that's quite quite fitting because uh, I, I believe Factorio was inspired by some of the um, some of the more industrial Minecraft mods in the first place so to go from this back back to that is sort of it feels like quite a nice way to quite way to go I hope you'll come along and join us for that that will be starting up in the next week or few it'll be a Thursday evening stream anyway so it'll be uh, taking the old um, industrial revolution spot and of course the Tuesday afternoon um, Tuesday evening streams of uh, me on my own playing space exploration will carry on running as ever um, please come along and join us for that that's that's going that's going very well we're um, I'm currently to start just making a starts on the deep space science which is challenging but but good fun the fact that the uh, GTA videos are still coming out every Sunday Sunday as well, and uh, I think they're they're definitely worth a watch. So yeah, please give them a shot, and I hope to see you around in the uh, in the next videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.